this story is over. <laughs> if there is an ending and, and everybody, uh, well, this is kind of a spoiler, but everyone dies, so <laughs> there's not many people left. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, everybody thinks I got to number one because of the mainstream, but there's no way, you know, the mainstream really does not know me. <laughs> it's really the Arion fans, you know, who, who pre-ordered. There were so many pre-orders with, with the record company and that got me into number one. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, the mainstream doesn't know who I am, really. <laughs> I, like I said in my little video, they're like, uh, hey, this Arion, it's the second time this year, number one. What is it? We never heard of it. We never hear it on the radio. We never see it on TV. So that's kind of cool. Maybe they'll check it out and they think, wow, this is weird music. <laughs> how this can, how can this be a number one? <laughs> that's probably what happened. Uh, I have to be honest, they're mixed. They're mixed, uh, uh, but I kind of expected that, you know, because it is a different album. And, and basically, if you look back at the history of Arion, uh, I've always made an album that everyone likes and then an album that everyone has to get used to. It's like the first album, Final Experiment, it was like, oh, cool, this rock opera, you know, with all these singers. And then you get actual fantasy and people were like, wait, <laughs> what is he doing here? Then you got actual, uh, Electric Castle and everyone's like, oh, big, big rock opera, you know, all these singers, fantastic. And then you got Universal Migrator where they were split in two and you got a prog album and a metal album and people were like, oh, what's happening here? And then you got uh, the human equation and, and it was what people wanted. And then you got the theory of everything, which was complicated with 42 tracks and, or four long tracks or what was it, you know? And uh, so yeah, the whole history of, of Arion, if you look back, is always like um, someone that people, uh, an album that people like immediately and an album that people have to get used to. And, uh, the previous album, The Source, was an album that everyone liked immediately because it, it, especially because of the first track, The Day the World Breaks Down, you know, it, it, it says everything about Arion. It has all the singers in it, the video is great, it has the most views I ever had. Um, so yeah, people love that. If it was so Arion, you know, it was typical Arion album, but this is different. Uh, and people have to get used to it, you know, and, and, uh, uh, I think it, it's it's a couple of reasons. It's more of a musical than than a, uh, an opera, so uh, they have to get used to that. Uh, and it was set up to be a movie originally. You know, it wasn't meant to be an aerial album. And I think if from the beginning this would have been an aerial album, I would have done things differently. Like uh, maybe it would have been a bit more, uh, a bit heavier, a bit more instrumental, complicated parts and stuff like that. Um, but I have to say, uh, uh, I, I was very worried about the reactions, you know, because the album is so different. But uh, uh, a lot of people, even th it's their favorite album, you know. So uh, I guess if you expect it like something like The Source, like this big, uh, complicated prog metal album, then, you know, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> No, 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 because it wasn't meant to be an Arion album, so it wasn't really the way for him. It was, but yeah, project wise, yeah, it's like, let's do an album that people like. Let's do an album that's about risky, a little bit risky. Um, and, but this was set up to be a movie straight from the beginning. Uh, and, and it's a soundtrack to a movie because with every little musical part that I wrote, I know exactly what should happen in the movie. And, when you do that, you're not going to write a five minute instrumental complicated part because what are you going to do in the movie <laughs> with that? So basically with this album, you're only seeing half the story. You, you, you're you hearing the music, uh, but you don't see the movie. Um, and, and basically Corona is to blame for that. Otherwise we would already be working on a movie. But of course that's really hard now. It's hard to get the funding because a, a movie costs millions. Uh, and it's hard to shoot because of all the constrictions and stuff like that. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I've got a. a, a I just contacted my favorite uh, Dutch director, who is Dick Maas, uh, and uh, uh, just by on the off chance, you know, and he. He heard it and he was like, whoa, you, you make great music, tell me more. And I had a couple of meetings with him, so he's totally in, into it. And he just had a big hit in China with a, a movie he made about a lion who eats people in Amsterdam. <laughs> he's a weird guy, but he does weird movies and he, he's not afraid to step out of, outside of the uh, typical, typical uh, Dutch movies and stuff like that. So, uh, and I already have uh, like funding people interested and I have a publisher interested. So we have a meeting uh, pretty, pretty soon actually. So um, yeah, the, the plan is still on the table. Uh, it's it's I don't plan it really. It's it's like because it had nothing to do with Arion. So I really do not plan it, but it just creeps in, you know. Maybe there is some weird planet there, planet Y, you know. Maybe maybe there are aliens talking in our waking dreams. Who knows? But <laughs> it it keeps creeping in. Um, like I make this story about the angel of death who is in transitus with her furies and they're looking at the earth and they're like, oh, these people are rather sad, you know, but they're, uh, they're uh, intelligent as well, you know, and they're interesting. So, yeah, what do you call a song like that? They're talking about the human equation. Then suddenly the title comes up, like, let's call this this human equation. And um, same in, in the booklet of the in the comic book. You know, if you look, there's a, uh, th there's a lot of uh, little references to Arion, uh, the Arion saga. There's there's like uh, little paintings in the back, you know, where you see Al Arion album covers. And uh, there is an idea behind that, but, it, but of course, I leave that up to the interpretation of, uh, of the fans. Because basically, they come up with <laughs> way better ideas than I would, so... <laughs> Well, the, uh, the thing is, if, if you make a movie, if you want to do a science fiction movie, you know, you're not going to make it under 50 million. I mean, that that's low budget for a sci-fi movie. I mean, these big budget movies, they cost over $200 million. So uh, a science fiction movie was out of the question. So that's how I got into, I've always been a huge horror fan, you know, ever since I saw The Omen and The Exorcist when I was like in my teens. Um, so uh yeah that that's why i thought let's not do a sci-fi let's do a, a ghost story uh but uh this is really a sidestep you know uh, it, it's not something i'll continue doing and uh, when i go back to arion i'll probably go back to sci-fi again i mean i'm saying that now you never know because because basically with human equation i did something different with theory of everything i did something different so uh it all depends uh, on, on the music, basically. I, I, I always first come up with the music and then I let the music inspire me to come up with a story. So that's how it works. So I do plan, you know, like I plan ahead now about my next project and I know what I want to do, but it might change. You know, it might change because I suddenly get a mail from a singer who says, shall we do an album? Okay, okay, let's do that. I mean, that's the way it went with Annika with Gentle Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, that was supposed to be a completely different album. It was supposed to be, I, I can't remember what it was going to be, but then at that point I got a mail from Annika, like, let's do something together. And then it's like, okay, I'm working on a project, let's do it together. So then suddenly the whole project changes. Yeah, he's a monster, a no question. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, no, good question. Uh, it was different this time. Uh, as I said, usually I start with the music, then I let the music inspire to me from the, the story. But this time, because I wanted to make a movie and I knew it would be a ghost story and I, I knew it was going to be a romantic ghost story, I knew it was going to be set in the 19th century. It's going to be this gothic ghost story. Um, so it was a little bit the other way around now. Uh, I, I And because of that, I also work differently because usually I uh, let myself uh, 
I, I, I don't want to be inspired by other music or, or, or influenced when I'm writing an album. But this time it was like, come on, <laughs> inspire me and influence me. So I, I listened to a, a lot of uh, uh, film scores like Ennio Morricone, John Carpenter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mike Oldfield. Um, and, and I watched a lot of rock operas like Jesus Christ Superstar, War of the Worlds. And uh, basically I could say to steal things, <laughs> but I, I, I would say like uh, to, to get inspired. And um, so that was a different way of working this time. I think that's also one of the reasons why the album sounds so different. It, it's never easy to get someone from the movie world because it's an entirely different world. And of course, they don't know me. So uh, sometimes with singers, you know, it's easy for me to get them because they know me. Uh, but but in the in the movie world, the, 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 the actors are shielded off really well. I mean, you can't just contact them. There's no way you can do that. You have to go to publishers and you have to go to managers. And you have to go to uh, agencies and stuff like that. So. Um, so you should never bet on one horse. You should have a list of 10 actors, try to contact them. And then it takes months and months, sometimes sometimes like half a year before you get an answer or before you get through. And then if you, if you only try one actor and you're working on that for half a year, you know, and it, it doesn't work out in the end, you have to start all over again. So, <laughs> so basically I made a list of 10 actors and uh, of course Tom Baker was on top because, um, I mean, I, I'm, I, he's my hero. I, I, I grew up watching Doctor Who, you know, that, those were my formative years. I was uh, 12, 12 years old or whatever, I don't know. And I didn't miss an episode. And, and his voice is so charismatic and so characteristic and, and so iconic, uh, a lot of words for that. Um, so uh, uh, him, I, contacted via uh, an agency on, on just on Google, a voice agency, and he was there. Mm -hmm. And there are like a uh, hundred actors there and 99% you never heard about and they're really easy to get and not so expensive, but the 1% is the big names and <laughs> you pay for that. And it's also hard to get through to them. But I kept trying and for months and months I've been negotiating and sending them stuff. and. Finally, they thought like, okay, now we've come to the point where we can offer it to Tom. That's the next step. Mm -hmm. And luckily Tom heard it and, and he was like, this is fantastic. And it feels like it's written for me, um, which it was, you know, because the moment we knew that Tom would be approached, we totally tailored the narration to his style, you know, with his humor and stuff like that. So we, we made it some, something that we would be quite sure that he would like so uh, and it worked out i went to england to record him and uh, he's such a nice guy and it's great to, to meet one of your idols and actually you know to to uh, find out it's a, it's a great guy as well so yeah 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 we we went to england and we came to the studio and he was already there for an hour and he was reading he was like oh, I have all these papers and he was like uh, making notes and i came in and he talked we talked a lot about it and he said uh, and i totally agreed i said i want this to be uh, like a grandfather telling a story to his grandson that's that's the feeling i wanted to just one person and i totally agreed so we changed some things in the in the text and uh, but he ad-libbed a lot, he improvised all the time when he was talking. And I think each little part we did three takes and there were three different takes, you know. Um, like like with Human Equation when he goes like, uh, oh, 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 poor people, you know, that's just out of the blue. <laughs> and then of course I'm sitting there in, in the control room behind the window and I'm like crying and, and goosebumps and uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it was very much a cooperation and uh, we did it all in one day. So it, uh, and uh, and he was really into it and that helps, you know, if it's like a guy who's getting paid for it and he does his job and he's off again, but it wasn't that like that at all. And uh, also, if you get the yearbook, there's a DVD of the making of 
and you see the whole process. You see him talking in his little booth, and you see uh, Tom and me talking about it, and uh, uh, and you can see what a nice guy he is. You will last forever. I see how she lights up your face. He will always be there. He's going to be uh, uh, always in everything I do, whether it's a solo album or. I mean, he, he was even in Gentle Storm. He played some weird instruments and stuff like that. And uh, my solo album, I didn't know him yet. No, no. But but any project I will do, I will involve Mike because because he's my hero and and he's such a talent and such a nice guy. And, um, I, I I found him on YouTube. He was doing Thick as a Brick uh, on the guitar, and I was like, oh, this guy's good. So I put a comment there. Hey man, great stuff or whatever. And then you get these recommendations in the sidebar, and it said Joe Heider, and I was like, "Well, let's click funny name, let's click on that." <laughs> and I clicked on it, and it was great. And I, this is great too. And I had no idea it was the same guy. So I was a fan of Joe Heider and of Mike Mills, and I didn't know they were connected. And when I did, I was like, "Okay, I got to work with this guy." And uh, and I always will. He's 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 so talented. I mean, he's. He's like way and way more talented than I am. And you probably think I'm humble now, but it's it's true, you know? So it's 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 really terrible for me to see that he's not bigger than he is, you know? That that he deserves so much more success than he has. And um, I'm lucky, you know, I, I started to 40 years ago. So I, had, I built it up through the years and I was already selling albums before the whole downloading and streaming thing, you know, so people want to have my stuff and, and, and it's, it's easier for me, but it's uh, frustrating to see that, that a guy like that isn't like commercially speaking uh, much bigger. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 and I don't limit him, you know, I just tell him uh, here's the part and uh, I, I don't even tell him what to do. I don't even give him lyrics often, you know. <laughs> It's like, I want you to do something here because I'm so afraid that I, if I would say, I want you to do something like, and I give him a, an idea that he sticks to that because his ideas are way better than mine, so. No, the story, uh, this story is over, <laughs> as I say in the album. Uh, no, 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 it's, it, there is an ending. And, and everybody, uh, well, this is kind of a spoiler, but everyone dies, so <laughs> there's not many people left. <laughs> it's not a happy story, I'm afraid. Uh, no, no, this is really a one-off thing. And, and what happens next, I have no idea.